Hi and welcome to this video tutorial on creating emissive materials in Rhino 7. In this video we'll be going through how to create a material that can emit different coloured lights and apply that to objects within your scene, much like in this preview render on the left here where we've got these different coloured emissive materials that are emitting blue, red and yellow light into the scene based upon those objects. Now, to do this, we're going to be working with a simple interior scene that I've got here, and I've set up this camera from inside this building, as you can kind of see on the right here. Currently, we haven't got any emissive materials made or applied, and it's just a simply lit scene with a sunlight coming through the window, as you can see here. We've got some of the materials have some roughness textures on just to give a little bit of dynamic reflections to them, so you can see on the floor and on the walls there. Now what we're going to start with is we're going to just turn off all the lights in the scene so these emissive materials can help relight our scene and we put a much darker kind of toned atmosphere to the whole image. To turn off all the lights we're just going to go up to render, render properties here and we're going to start by scrolling down to the lighting and making sure the sun is turned off and also if you have the skylight turned off turn off that too. As well as this, we're also going to turn off this Use Custom Environment for Reflections because this can also light up the scene and sometimes give you unpredictable results when wanting to light the scene with artificial lighting as we're going to look at in this video. Now, one last thing I do is I change the backdrop to instead of a white solid colour, we're just going to make it black. So the backdrop to the scene is black as well, so the whole scene is a lot darker. So if I hit OK, and we'll put this on rendered view, you can see now that the scene is now a lot darker. We do get a slight glow in the render and I'll just do a quick render preview to show you what that looks like. As you can see now in the render preview the lights are turned off and the backlight is off. We've still got this incoming light which looks like a sunlight here and I found this is a glitch that can sometimes happen when you have no lights on in the scene. Rhino introduces this sort of sunlight coming in on the side of the image um, when you put in an emissive material you'll find this light actually turns itself off and we'll see this in a second when we apply our emissive material to the scene. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to close down this render and we're going to start by just making a simple sphere and we'll put it in the middle of this room here. I'm going to move it up slightly so you can see it hovering in the middle there. Then we're going to go to our materials palette on the right here. We're going to click create new material and we're going to make a physically based material here. With that made, we're going to scroll to the detailed settings in that material and we'll call this Emission 1. So under detailed settings, we're going to go to Emission here. And this controls whether our material is an emissive material or not. Now, once you've clicked on Emission, it will apply a white emission with a multiplier of 1 to that material and what we're going to do is we're going to select our object right click on our material and go assign to object there so we've now got this lit up ball in our scene and let's do another render preview to have a look and see what that's now doing to the scene now you can see as that's rendering it out that weird side light has gone off and the scene is completely pitch black apart from this glowing sphere we've got which is controlled by our emissive material there, which is white and on a multiplier of one. Now, if we stop that, we have a few parameters we can play around with with this material. We have the color and we have the multiplier there. Now, the color can obviously control the color of that emission. We can change it to a red emission if we want to, and you can see it update in the preview there and also the window here. The multiplier refers to the power of that light and the intensity of it. So if we up it to 10, it will be a lot brighter than if it's on a 1. So if we do a quick render preview of that and have a look at the difference, you'll see the brightness difference between that emission of 1 and the emission of 10. So there you go, that's with a red light on 10 and you can see the scene is a lot brighter now. It's being lit up by that ball and everything's a bit flared out because it's almost slightly too bright for the scene there. So it's good to experiment with that multiplier to see how bright or how dark you need to set this material in order for it to work correctly within your scene. Now I think that a multiplier of 10 is probably slightly too bright, so I'm going to set it down to sort of a 2 or a 3 there. So let's turn that off now and put that back down to a kind of a multiplier of 3 there. 
Now as well as the colour emission you can also add a texture to this and this is best clearly seen when you apply it to a flat plane so we can see the texture on that plane. So what I'm going to do is we're going to draw out a plane in this view as well. Just a simple rectangular plane there. And let's move it up on this back wall here. And what we'll do with that plane is we're going to duplicate our missing material, so we'll make another one just by hitting this duplicate tab here. We'll call this emission 2. And instead of a color, we're going to click to assign a texture here. And I'm just going to assign a simple landscape image, like this meadow here would do, to that texture. So instead of being controlled by color, it's now being controlled by a picture there. And if we assign that to the object, you can see there, and I can turn on rendered view so we can see it in this view, that that image is now transferred onto the plane. It's going to be a bit blown out because it's assigned as a light texture, an emissive texture, so everything's a lot brighter than it would be usually. But what you'll find if we do a render preview of this is that that image will now be giving light to the entire scene. So as this renders out you can see there that that image is now helping light up the scene as well as our red sphere here. So very quickly you can start to apply a lot of these different materials to different objects in your scene and they can be used to help light or provide artificial lighting to the scene. Now it doesn't just have to be done on spheres or planes like this, you could also apply these materials to any objects in your scene. So if we duplicate this last one and this time let's make this a kind of nice blue material and I'm actually going to apply it to this whole table here and then we'll re-render this out and you'll see that any object can have an emissive material on and this is particularly useful for making neon text or any object that you want to glow in a certain way so they're quite a powerful material to use especially for if you want to create artificial lighting within your scene so that was a very quick tutorial on how to create emissive materials in Rhino 7. I hope you found it helpful. And in the next video, we're going to be looking at how to apply some post effects to these to give them an ambient glow to this effect within the render. Thank you for watching.